they control the leader of the universities, they control the leader of the syndicate. Any movement, they control the leaders. They don't control the people, but they control the leaders. And so it, it is the same with the church. Because when I've been pastor, I no serious problem with the government. But uh, after being elected as a national leader uh, of the Church of God in Cuba, the, the problem starts. I, I don't accept it. So they have two options, or kill me or put me in jail. I wake up as normally for uh, bring my daughter to a school and my house was around with military operations. The condition of the jail is, you know, is as a political, is a, is a really bad. They have uh, four months with light on. You don't know if it's morning, it's night. Uh, the jail was a, a short space, a two meter for three meter and four guys in, in inside. You don't have windows, you, the door is Block. You have water, supply water into the jail only in the morning uh, for five minutes and then they don't put water again until time 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock p.m. But, thank God, in my cell never, never closed completely. So they close it, but in my cell the water is still running all, all day. When they discover it, that, they move chain for another cell. But happen the same. Any time that they chain me to the new cell, if they try to close the water, the, the water supply, the seal being broken. It was like Israel in the desert, and God made water from the rock. God is still supply water. God is still supplying what you need, even in the desert. The rest of my, of my time in prison was a continuously uh, intent for demolition my faith, you know, to broke my, my faith. But, uh, thank God, my faith were uh, prison. Uh, at night, the, when Cuba is hot, it's hot, it's really hot. People is ill about the skin because so hot. They never told me how many years that not. They call you, please take you all your things and come out. So you say you have a petition, oh, today I will release. No, no, you're not released. So uh, uh, one hour, one day in prison is too long. The day is lonely. So one day for you is like a, a week. I stopped, I said, I will not eat anymore. A hunger strike uh, until this situation finishes. And my, my partners in the jail are so worried about my health. The last night in prison, uh, I've been praying uh, with my faith from the, the wall in my bed. My soul is crying. Uh, but in that moment, I saw the conviction of the Holy Spirit. God told me that I am not alone. I am not alone. God told me, wake up and eat because you have a long way in front of you. You have a long way, Isabel. Eat what? But my partner in the cell, he had kept a glass of water and a, and, a, and a piece of bread for me. So I ate the bread, I drank the water, and in the morning, I, I was released. God is doing something, God is on the move. I saw that God is preparing me in order that to be a voice, in order that to, the voice of the many, many others. I could uh, uh, testify in the Congress of the United States, I could testify in the Senate, I could testify in the Commission of the Human Rights, I could testify. There are a huge promises of God. There are huge promises of God that it's easy to memorize the, the promise. But when you are in that condition, you experience that God is faithful to accomplish the, His promise. I never experienced the, the God present more deeply, more, more reality than when I've been in jail. It's nice to pray at home, it's nice to meet with the brother and sister at the church, singing, praying. It's good to you know to experience God outside, 
but God proved me that even in the sad, in the darkness, even in the, the world condition, He is still alive and He is still in charge. He is still in charge. 